It's my pleasure to introduce Magla, co-founder of India Sourcing Network, presenting on India as unique sourcing destination opportunities and challenges. Everyone, please join me in giving a big round of applause to welcome Magla. The Thank stage is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I am standing in between you and lunch. <laughs> so uh, my presentation will go for about 30 minutes. And um, I will also be taking Q&A after the presentation. All right, so um, we're going to be talking about how you can source products from India, what are the opportunities, and some of the challenges. So these are the topics that we're going to be covering today. Why you should consider sourcing from India, what are some of the differences between India and China, uh, what types of products you can source, challenges, and also some tips. And then we'll also talk about India sourcing trip. Um, a little bit of introduction about me. So I've been working in the Asia sourcing industry for over 24 years. And um, we currently help global importers import products from India and also Vietnam. And um, I worked in, the, in India, in the Philippines, China. I worked in China for 10 years and Singapore, and now I am back in India, focusing more on helping importers source products from India. I'm the co-founder of India Sourcing Network, Vietnam Sourcing Network, and we also do sourcing trips to India and Vietnam. Okay, why you should consider sourcing from India. Now, um, raise your hand if you have ever considered buying products from India. Anybody? No, all, all focused on China, okay, cool. So the number one reason why you should consider sourcing from India in the current situation is to mitigate your sourcing risk. Now, everybody knows that if you put all your eggs in one basket, that is a big risk, right? So you need to diversify your sourcing. If you're sourcing everything from China or one country, any one country, that's a risk to your business. You know, in case the supply chain is affected in that one country, then your entire business is going to be affected. So it's always a good idea to spread your risk when you are sourcing products. Um, secondly, there are a lot of unique products that are found in India that are not found in other countries. So for example, there is this whole industry of handcrafted products that are made of natural materials such as wood, metal, ceramic. There are artisans that specialize in creating and developing these products. Um, and you know they, their skills have been developed over generations. So there are different production hubs that specialize in these types of products and um, the skills have been passed down from one generation to another. So they're very unique handcrafted products. Um, also low MOQs. If you're just starting out, if you're you know, an Amazon e-commerce seller, then a lot of the products from India have low MOQs. Especially for the handcrafted products, you can source as few as you know, 100 uh, units as well. A lot of suppliers in India also have MOV, which is minimum order value. So what that means is that you can source, let's say, products worth of you know, $5,000, $8,000, for example, and you can mix different SKUs. So you can have you know, 500 pieces of this, 200 pieces of this, 100 pieces of different kind of products. So that also allows you to um, you know, reduce your risk and reduce your dependency on one particular SKU. You can test different SKUs at the same time. A lot of suppliers in India will speak English, so communication is much easier. There's no trade tariff. Now, when you're importing into the US from China, for certain categories, there's this Trump tariff, which can be very high. So there's no such tariff from India. Uh, there are, of course, import duties, but usually for most product categories, the import duties are about 2%, 4%, and many products do not have any import duties at all. Um, a lot of products in India are eco-friendly products. So if you are looking to develop a brand that focuses on eco-friendly products, then India is a great opportunity uh, for that. And I will show some of the different types of eco-friendly products that are available in India. There's a lot of raw material availability as well, whether it's wood, uh, cotton. India is one of the biggest producers of cotton. So if you're looking for organic cotton, for example, India is a great place to source those types of products. You know, if you're buying from Vietnam, a lot of the materials are actually imported from China. So that can you know, uh, have an effect on the overall delivery lead time. But in India, a lot of the metal, wood, fabric is available locally. Also, labor costs are lower in India. Now, in China, production costs have been going up. 
If you've been sourcing in China for a long time, you know that overall labor costs have been going up, production costs have been going up. However, in India and also Vietnam, labor costs are lower. So if your product is, uh, you know, if it requires more manual work, if it requires manual labor, it can be more cost effective to source it in India. Okay, what are some of the differences between India and China? So India does a lot of unique handmade products, as I said, whereas China specializes in mass-produced products. Um, India can do low MOQs, whereas in China, mostly the MOQs are higher, especially for customized products. In India, generally, there is more respect for IP. In China, sometimes, you know, IP uh, infringements happen because a lot of the suppliers in China also sell directly on Amazon. In India, lower labor costs and production costs, whereas in China, costs are increasing. Of course, um, you know, in terms of, uh, yeah, there are no tariffs when you're importing into the US from India, whereas from China, there are higher tariffs. One of the disadvantages of sourcing in India is that there are fewer product categories. In China, you can source anything and everything, but that's not the case in India or even Vietnam. There are certain categories that you know, these countries really specialize in. So that's something to consider. For example, if you're doing electronics, that's only China. China is the only place to source electronics. There's no other country in the world currently that really manufactures electronics that ch like China does. And, um, but you know, fashion, apparel, uh, things like that are being produced in India and also Vietnam. Um, not all factories are online. Um, in India, so it's more difficult to find factories, whereas in China, you have global sources, and it's so much easier to find um, you know, suppliers. Of course, global sources is in India as well, and you can find suppliers from India on the global sources website. And in fact, over here at the trade show, you should visit the India booths. There are lots of companies from India that, have, that are exhibiting over here. Um, also, there's not much information available online about sourcing in India. But then from China, there's a lot of information that is available. Um, this is just a comparison of uh, the minimum wages in China and India and also Vietnam over here. So you can see the difference. And this is why um, you know, a lot of the labor-intensive products can be cheaper in India and also Vietnam. OK, so let's talk about what types of products you can source um, in India. So a lot of the products are made from natural materials. For example, home decor items um, that are made out of metal, wood, ceramic, jute, cotton, glass, marble, a lot of natural materials. And there's kitchen and tableware items, there's furniture. Furnishings is a huge category. Um, cushion covers, rugs, bed sheets, bed covers, pet products, eco-friendly products, fashion items such as uh, jewelry, accessories, footwear, Textiles and apparel, especially those that are made from natural materials. Of course, there is polyester and functional fabric as well, but India generally specializes more in natural materials, whereas um, you know China will do more of the functional fabrics, and Vietnam also does a lot of the sports fabric and, and um, other types of functional materials. And then leather is a big category as well. You've got clothing, bags, wallets, pet products, equestrian products, and food items such as um, tea, coffee, spices. A lot of health supplements are also being produced in India. And many um, Amazon e-commerce sellers are actually creating their own uh, private label brands with these types, different types of herbal supplements that are available from India. For example, ashwagandha and turmeric, those are very popular nowadays. Shilajit, that's very popular nowadays in the US and Europe. So I uh, just wanted to show some representative products. So these, for example, are all made of glass and metal. Um, Indian suppliers really focus on design. And this is one of the reasons why you will not find their products online on their websites, because they develop their own designs in-house. A lot of suppliers also uh, hire designers from overseas to design their products. So they are very protective about their designs. In fact, if you go to any trade show, uh, you know, they, they won't want you to take photos at, the, at their booths because they want to protect their designs. So designs are really uh, you know, innovative and unique. That's one uh, big advantage of sourcing in India. These are some other items that are made out of wood and um, also ceramic. And one of the things that India specializes in is really 
uh, combining different products. So if you see, combining different materials. So if you see over here, this black tray, it's got wood in the middle, and then on either side, it's got marble. Then this tray at the bottom, it's got uh, wood, it's made out of wood, and then in the middle is resin. So you'll find a lot of these unique designs where different materials are combined together to create very unique products. Um, one of the differences in terms of the wooden items from India and China, so China does a lot of bamboo wood and acacia wood, whereas India does mango wood. Mango wood is a softer wood and it is natural, it has a very beautiful grain, and it is also very eco-friendly because the mango tree is cut after the tree reaches its fruit-bearing age. So there's no deforestation when a mango tree is cut. So mango wood is considered very eco-friendly. Okay, these are some different types of leather items that are available. So you'll find all types of leather, whether it is um, soft leather that's used for um, you know, garments such as jackets, dresses, pants, belts, and there's also the more, um, you know, coarser, thicker buff leather that's used for men's accessories or equestrian products or, um, you know, even these leather journals are actually very popular. Okay, furniture. So furniture is made out of wood, metal, leather, fabric, a lot of very unique designs. Antique furniture is also a very good category from India. Now, of course, if you're selling you know, online, then it's very difficult to do furniture because they're so bulky. But a lot of the furniture nowadays are actually flat pack. So you could do maybe some side tables or other types of small furniture that is flat pack. Huge variety of jewelry, fashion accessories, and footwear. This is one of India's strong categories, and that's why you'll see a lot of suppliers over here. So uh, in terms of jewelry, there's beautiful semi-precious stones, sterling silver, gold, and even diamonds, <laughs> in case anyone's is, anyone is um, um, you know, uh, adventurous enough to source diamonds, you can do that as well. There's lots of footwear, different types of footwear, sports footwear, leather footwear, ladies' footwear as well. Also costume jewelry, of course, and other types of fashion accessories, such as belts, bags, um, handbags is a huge category as well. Okay, fashion garments, mostly made out of organic cotton, silk, linen, and wool, but of course, man-made fibers are available too, but India's strength is actually organic cotton and regular cotton. So if you are looking for anything organic cotton, India is the best place to go, uh, go source those products because the quality is really good. You'll find lots of suppliers, so the pricing is very competitive. And also, one of the things that India specializes in is a lot of the embellishments. For example, you see this um, dress over here is hand embroidered. Okay, this pointer is not working. But this dress in the middle, it's, it's got some very beautiful embroidery. Um, and there are other types of embellishments that India is known for. I'll just show you a map as well of the different types of textiles that are available. Okay, pet products, again, metal, leather, fabric, all types of uh, different pet products, also eco-friendly products. Um, now, these are very interesting, and this is a big focus of Indian suppliers nowadays, to produce alternative materials to leather and PU. So, for example, this bag that you see over here, can anybody guess what material it is made from? Any guesses, wild guesses? This bag over here, this handbag. Anyone? No? <laughs> no? Nobody? Okay, it's made from cork. Cork. Cork is actually, it comes from the bark of a tree, and it's the same cork that's used for, uh, you know, wine stoppers. So that same material is used to create fabric, and then you can make anything out of it. So even these uh, wine bottle holders are made from cork. And even that uh, handbag is made from cork. So there are so many innovative materials in India nowadays. So there's, for example, uh, pineapple fiber, banana fiber, cactus. Like all of these very cool uh, materials are being developed in India. And they are alternatives to genuine leather and also to PU. Now, of course, these are currently more expensive because they are more niche. They are not mass market materials, so they will be more expensive. But there is a certain market for these kinds of products. Okay, furnishings and also macrame products. So huge variety of you know, cushion covers, uh, bedspreads, 
um, also a lot of cotton bed sheets. And for the cushion covers, um, you'll find that India does a lot of beautiful different effects. So whether it's embroidered or beaded or, you know, a lot of different effects are also combined. Different techniques are combined on the cushion covers. So huge variety and very unique designs. This is a map that shows all the different types of products that are manufactured. So you can see that there is a production hub for each type of material. For example, wooden products are manufactured in the city of Muradabad. OK, the pointer is not working. But anyway, the city of Muradabad up there, that produces metal and wooden home products. And then Firozabad for glass products, Kanpur for leather. Agra for marble and stone products. So there are different production hubs for different types of materials. And it is important to source these materials from the production hubs, you know, like China. Shenzhen is known for electronics, right? You would not buy electronics from Jiangsu province, for example. Any electronics would be from Shenzhen. So similarly, there are production hubs for different products in um, India as well. OK, fabrics. So huge variety of fabrics. One of the very distinct kind of um, you know, types of printing that is available in India is called block printing. Has anybody heard of block printing? No? OK. It's a very traditional method of printing where wooden blocks are used to print on fabric. So this one that you see at the bottom, this has actually been printed using the block printed met printing method. And it's a manual process. There's actually a man who you know, dips the wooden block in dye and then stamps the fabric. <laughs> so it's a very manual kind of process. But it's very interesting. And the advantage is that you can source smaller quantities. Like if you're sourcing any type of um, textiles that's printed in a textile mill, for example, the MOQs can be very high. You, know, you might have to buy like 3,000 meters. But when you're sourcing these um, uh, manually printed fabrics, and you get even source like 100 meters. That's not a problem. So that's one advantage. Now, this is a map that shows all the different types of materials and fabrics that are available in India. And this is where this, not many people know that each state in India actually has a different material, different type of fabric that they specialize in. So for example, in North India, there's a lot of wool, uh, pashmina shawls, which is also known as Kashmir. Then in the West, there's embroidery. There's you know, these mirror embellishments. There's tie and dye. There's that pink embroidery that's very famous, chicken curry. In the South, it's a lot of silk. So huge variety of fabrics available. A lot of these fabrics are also handloom fabrics. So again, the MOQs can be lower if you're sourcing these handloom fabrics. Okay. So challenges and tips. Um, one of the challenge that some buyers face when they source in India is that suppliers sometimes overpromise and underdeliver. They don't like to say no. <laughs> so whatever you ask them, if you ask them, hey, can you do this? Yes, of course, we can do it. That's not a problem. And even if they can't do it in-house, they will go figure out how to do it. They'll maybe outsource it from somewhere. So that is something that you have to you know, keep in mind. Uh, make sure that the supplier that you deal with really specializes in the product. They have in-house capability, and they, have, they are already producing the product. Because sometimes when they outsource a specific product, then they don't have a lot of control over quality. Okay? Um, also, sometimes in terms of lead times, um, you know, lead times can be longer, especially for handmade products that are made out of uh, wood or metal. For example, if you're buying you know, let's say 1,000, 1,500 pieces of a wooden item, then the lead time can be anywhere from two months to three months as well. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when you are sourcing. You just have to plan better, especially for the handmade products. Sometimes there are delivery delays. <laughs> and in India, you know, there's this thing, like India is more, I would say, relaxed. I think China is like very professional and works fast and instant. Um, but India, Vietnam, Thailand, they're a bit more chill, they're a bit more relaxed. Um, there's more work-life balance, I would say. And um, there are delivery de delays sometimes. So maybe the supplier says that, okay, the product will be ready on so-and-so date, but then <laughs> right before um, the delivery date, they will say, oh, sorry, there's a delay of one week or something like that. So this sometimes happens in India. 
so this is something you have to be mindful of and you have to constantly follow up with the supplier and just make sure that uh, there are no issues in the production. India's, uh, India's suppliers currently are slow to adapt advanced manufacturing, but that is changing. There are more and more factories being set up that are producing, you know, uh, like plastic products and the, also metal products and other materials that are produced on uh, machines and automated production. Of course, the automotive industry in India is very, very advanced. In fact, most of the cars that are sold in India, which is like millions, if not billions, no, millions, <laughs> they are mostly produced in India. So the automotive industry is very advanced and there's all like um, automated production happening. Even electronics, especially mobile phones, are now being produced in India. Apple has a factory there, Xiaomi has a factory, um, and a lot of you know, Bluetooth headsets, those kind of consumer electronics are also being produced in India. But of course, China is still the main manufacturing hub for electronics, and that is not gonna change in the near future. Um, also, there's limited product range, as, as I already mentioned. Also, you know, some people say that, okay, I'm buying this product from China. Now I wanna source this from India or Vietnam. It doesn't work that way. You have to look at what products India or Vietnam or any other alternative market is specializing in and then come to that country for that specific product. Okay, so for example, if it's cotton, anything wood, anything metal, come to India. If it is backpacks or uh, sportswear or luggage or footwear, you know, go to Vietnam. So you have to understand the capabilities and the specialties of each mar market. Okay, some tips, develop relationships, if possible, visit the factory. And this is of course important in China as well, there's a concept of guanxi. So in India, it's guanxi times 10. <laughs> so relationships are really, really important. And once you visit the supplier, meet them face to face, you'll find that they give you better terms, priority treatment, and just, you know, the relationship really makes things much easier because they know that you're a serious buyer. Um, because all Indian suppliers, in fact, all suppliers are looking for long-term customers, right? Because it's more expensive for them to keep getting new customers. So they all, they're all looking for long-term customers. So if you can show that you have a long-term business and you, can, and you want a partner as your supplier, then it's going to make things much easier and they're going to treat you differently as opposed to somebody just sending them a message online and saying that, hey, I want 200 pieces of so-and-so item. Okay, use local resources and boots on the ground as much as possible because you do need to follow up with suppliers. It's always good to visit the factory. It's also important to give very clear and correct specifications and requirements right at the beginning. And this is of course true regardless of where you're sourcing from, whether it's India or China. But India specifically because you don't want them to assume anything because maybe your quality requirements or your definition of quality is different from their definition of quality. Um, okay, this is very important. Pick a factory that fits your size and capability. Now there are thousands and thousands of factories in India. Some are very small, they are startups, some are huge. So you have to make sure that depending on the order size that you are expecting, you, you know, source products from that sized factory. If you're just doing small orders and go with a small mid-sized factory, if you are expecting to scale and order in containers, then of course go with a large factory that has large capacity. Uh, do a factory audit, always get pre-production samples, not only samples before you place an order, but pre-production samples. So pre-production samples are different. This means that these are samples that are produced right before the production is gonna start. Because you wanna make sure that the raw materials that are used for your actual production run are you know, really good quality. And of course, do third party inspections. Have a detailed sales contract. Don't place very small orders because shipping costs can be high. Overall, shipping costs are a very competitive to China. And I'll also give you a tip for shipping you should ship to the east coast of the US. If you're shipping to the US, you should ship to the east coast from India because that's shorter and it's less expensive. Use minimum order value so that you can um, source a wider range of products. Plan orders well in advance. Okay, use supplier backstory as your brand story. Now this is another advantage when you're sourcing from India because a lot of the suppliers use artisans. 
And these artisans have, you know, stories and history. And so you can use that as your brand story if you're selling on Amazon and that helps differentiate your brand from other brands. There are also many women groups, for example, where, you know, all of these women from villages or small cities, they come together in a community hall and they manufacture products. Or maybe these uh, certain suppliers even give products uh, to women to work at, you know, at home. That's very common in India and also Vietnam. So you can use that as your brand story to say that you are helping uh, uplift the lives of these artisans or these women, right? I think end consumers really like that kind of uh, story. Okay, um, when you're comparing costs between China and India, always compare the landed cost because maybe the price of the product in India is slightly higher than it is in China, but then you've got the overall tariffs and shipping and everything. So make sure that you compare the landed cost. Follow up, follow up, follow up <laughs> with your suppliers. That's always a good idea. Uh, just to make sure, I mean, especially if you're placing small orders, you know, sometimes suppliers, they like to prioritize bigger buyers. Um, and so just make sure that you're following up or use a sourcing agency. Okay, I'll quickly talk about this uh, sourcing trip that we do in India. The next one is coming up in October, in case anyone's interested. So this is an eight-day trip where um, we teach you all about sourcing from India. We do a full-day conference. We also help you source unique products. We go to a trade show. And of course, we also experience the culture of India. And we also do a visit to Taj Mahal. Of course, any trip to India is incomplete without a visit to the Taj Mahal. So here are some of the benefits of attending the trip. Uh, you can source unique products. You can learn all about sourcing from India. You can speed up your sourcing. You know, you guys are here at a trade show. You know the advantage of actually visiting a trade show and seeing thousands of products. You can touch and feel products to determine their quality, meet suppliers, uh, meet vetted sourcing service providers like logistics companies, quality control, packaging, lawyer. So we put together the entire ecosystem, all types of service providers that you might need when you are sourcing products from India. Uh, you can find new suppliers for your existing products, you can visit factories, you can immerse in India's culture, network with other um, attendees. There are a lot of e-commerce and sourcing experts that join the trip. And of course, you focus on doing your business, whereas we manage the entire logistics, including hotel, transportation, food, etc. India can be a bit overwhelming for people who visited the first time. <laughs> Um, so if you want more information, you can go to indiasourcingtrip.com. And also, sorry, yeah, you can take a picture of that. So indiasourcingtrip.com, there, there's, uh, you can get more information there. The next trip is in October. And uh, we also have uh, sourcing services that we offer for India and Vietnam, where we manage the entire sourcing process for you uh, from start to finish, including finding suppliers and uh, negotiating placing orders, facilitating payments, logistics, and also quality control. So you can get more information at indiasourcingnetwork.com and also vietnamsourcingnetwork.com. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much.